did you select your, the college you went to? What was your major? Uh, so graduated from LA high schools, uh, fall of 66. This is just the 66 is starting. Uh, and uh, couldn't, my grades weren't good enough for anybody, really. Um, they were C's, okay? So I do a first semester, uh, trimester at Pepperdine where my mama can pay for my, me to get in, okay? Mm. And so um, that's Pepperdine on Vermont. Mm -hmm. We're not talking right. about it. Mm -hmm. So I do that first trimester and I get enough credits that I, so I can transfer to Cal State LA because that's where my running partner, Albert Armour, my reading competitor is. So I transfer to Cal State LA. And uh, a couple of things happened at that time. One, uh, my stepfather's you know, out of the house. Uh, it's me and my mother. And uh, there's, some, there's some friction with a uh, with an adolescent um, at this stage, because you're you know you're you're almost an adult, so but the, the, you know but your directions you have to take direction from the person who's paying the bills, mm -hmm. which was her position. Okay, so I make my move to Cal State LA without her knowing. <laughs> I have to get black. Okay, I'm a I'm a Negro here, you know. Um, um, a, uh, John Kennedy Negro, Democrat Negro, okay? Uh, uh, I'm a we shall overcome Negro, okay? I'm on a Dr. King, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this sense of racial consciousness is, uh, is clawing at me from this environment, and I'm curious about it, but I haven't made any, uh, I haven't made a commitment, and Babu and the rest of them are trying to, to produce this. So if we were at the um, uh, student dedunk where you're getting food and what have you, cafeteria, yeah. um, our conversations are, you know, very edifying. How I joined the BSU is not, let's just say I'm in it. It'll probably come to me how I decided to join. But uh, I'm, and I'm getting to this point of not being called Negro, but of being called black. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's making sense to me in a number of ways. Okay. And so uh, as I, my blackness grows and so does my Afro, Lord bless it. Where is it gone? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, I'm trying to help with this recruiting and consciousness raising uh, operation that we are doing as a BSU. You know, we've just had the, the Watts riots and what have you. Okay, so this is post that, because the riots were in 65. Right? While you were in high school. Yep, while I was in high school, but there's no consciousness there. All I know is, know is this phenomenon has happened. I, know, I don't know if I'm particularly proud of it or, or, or advocate of it, but by 66, it's become one of the indicators of our time. And what's coming out of it is, this sense of blackness, okay? We black people, this is what's happening to us. You know, they've made us ashamed of what, you know, we, you know, we rather identify with the enemy than with ourselves. You know, a mixture of Malcolm, is, Malcolm Brew, Muslim stuff, uh, you know, uh, civil rights stuff. We are talking this, this consciousness question. We are calling ourselves black. We are trying to recruit black students into the BSU as they come on campus. So we have a table along this pathway that comes up from the parking structure to the building. And we put a, get a big extension cord, grab off some of the power, and we play Coltrane and all the others of the time. And we're mm -hmm. trying to, brother, where you going? I ain't your brother. <laughs> Sister, why, what are you doing today? Sister? Am I related to you? You know, you know. This is this is how we met. You know, we all related. We black. Black what? You know, I'm an. You know, my people were <laughs> all of that stuff. Okay, 
And we're, you know, doing this consciousness raising stuff. So, um, um, We make a we make a demands on the on the system. We want black we want black classes. The BSU, as one of its demands, goes to the student newspaper and demands that they change our description from uh, Negro to black. We want to be called black. The white boy who is uh, the student editor of the paper is about to leave. And to replacing him is a new Negro, right, right by his side. And so the, this white boy says, "So you want what? We want to be called. We don't want to be called by you know uh, Negroes anymore. We want to be called black." And so he says, um, "Let me vulgarize this. The rest of you niggas agree with this shit, or is this your shit?" And we said, "We said no. We speak for all our brothers and sisters on the campus." And he says, well, until I get something from them, maybe you can do a poll or something. But besides, I'm, I'm out of here. I'm not the, here's the new Negro who will be running your, your uh, running the paper. And his brother says, I'm not sure that everybody wants to be called that. I, you know, I myself, not, you know, don't mind being called a Negro. And I think it's fine. <laughs> so we, <laughs> we leave this, okay? This is the 60s. And coming to visit our campus is Leroy Jones. Oh, okay. He has mm -hmm. just been convicted of incitement to riot. And he is on bail out in the hinterlands. And so he comes to our campus, comes to those same people who we could not get to come to the table. And we get the hall that, you know, where main events happen and he's speaking there. It's packed. Everyone who did not stop and ran away from the table is there to see the celebrity of the time of the hour. And he, so he's there, all right? And what he does for us is a recruiting and a consciousness uh, effort dream. He tells about his, his trial. Everybody knows it's, it's false. Uh, the notion that, because uh, uh, one of the lines that, that he used in, uh, when the judge convicted him, and says, for incitement to riot, and, and Leroy interrupted him, and two poems. <laughs> I convict you to blah, 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 blah. All right. So he tells us all of this stuff. Then he does one of his poems, and I cannot remember what the poem's title was, but he it had an outer space uh, quality to it, where mm -hmm. it was like the brother from another planet reality, where all these spacemen turn, come in, but they're black, <laughs> mm -hmm. and they're smoking reef, <laughs> and it's you know, and 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 one of one, I think one of the lines, it, not from that poem, maybe he read us a couple. One of the lines from the from, that he was reading was was, I remember this distinctly. Take off the wig, take off the wig, take off the wig. Cause you know, this was all consciousness stuff. So, you know, everybody, <laughs> right, right. And I mean, he got roaring ovations from these wig wearers. Okay? <laughs> well, you know, yes, 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 yes. Okay. So show you how successful it was. So he leaves and campus is a Twitter and we, we, you know, we we hope to find our ranks swelling. Monday of that, the Monday following had to be, or the next day following, but whenever. Headline of the of the uh, of the school paper: No more Negro. It is now the policy of this paper. This is the new black, uh, the no Negro, the new Negro, who has taken over the reins as editor. It is, will be the policy of this paper from here on to refer to any who had previously been described as Negroes, as Black, okay? And then he goes through his little, whatever consciousness level it, it brought him to this point and the Leroy Jones presence, you know, and there we were, our first success <laughs> in terms of Black consciousness. What would you say the Black student 
union accomplished while you were there? Uh, I would say that that consciousness raising is no little thing. We are breaking from um, our self description. Um, we're, or the description we've been given to another a description of, of ourselves and what it means. Uh, if, and what it was important about that was the break with um, that old description of ourselves. Uh, were we, were we, why were we, what was the color question that we were wrestling with? Now, you know how important that is in terms of the African-American community. My people aren't really, you know, from Africa. I have, I'm Native American, I'm Polynesian, I'm whatever, but I'm not what you're describing because I don't know what it is you're describing and, and that's, what the, that's what the challenge became. You begin to describe yourself and this self-definition is coming out of all these readings and the actions you are watching, you know, as we assert the right, uh, citizenship rights in this country and watch and, and identify with what's going on in Africa, okay? So um, it's no little thing for that in, its, in and of itself that you think of yourself differently. You think of yourself differently, you act differently. Mm -hmm. Sounds almost like the rhetoric of the time. And that act, that those different actions get you to go after, pursue, at, pursue things that are in your interest. Is this really, you know, do I want a job here, a nine to five with these people under these circumstances, or do I want a job that I create or I'm the, or the, and that has an impact on my people? You know, what are these other people doing? Seeing it is, am I just a plug into theirs or do I need to totally rip away and, and establish my own? You know, and what does that mean? You know, what are the mechanisms of that? How can that be pulled off? So then you're, and at the same time, you're reading, you're reading your Marcus Garvey, okay? And what is he talking about? You're listening to Karenga argue this self-discovery, self-determination, uh, um, consciousness, black consciousness, okay? You're watching the Panthers, you know, uh, you know, become quote unquote revolutionaries on the streets of Los Angeles, okay? And, you know, what Huey is doing, you know, up there, okay? You're watching the movement shift as SNCC is no longer Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. They're the last thing in terms of nonviolent. You're watching Stokely make arguments again and again. Uh, we would have, uh, I remember a particular time that Stokely came here. <sighs> Poor Al, he was at work and I don't know why his wife came with me. She is pregnant with their child, okay? And I don't know how I, I, I don't know how I talk Norma into that. There is no reason on earth, because Norma, the last thing she's thinking about is that, I got a baby, I'm fucking up my schooling, and I'm going with this nigga to see <laughs> snick. What the fuck, I don't care what Stokely Carmichael has to say. Anyway, she's with me for sure. some unknown reason. The room is full. Can't remember if we were at the Black Congress or not. And Stokely's rapping, as we said. Oh God, I haven't said that in a long time. So he's, you know, consciousness, what's been happening, who, he's, who we're fighting, why should, we be, uh, why should we be fighting the Vietnamese? You know, they are brothers just like us, white people in front of them, blah, 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 blah. So uh, uh, one of the one of the things that I remember vividly from that was a African brother stood up. Okay, he came, you know, and he stood up and he says, "Please excuse me because my English is not too good." And Stokely says, "Brother, we need to apologize for you to you for speaking this shit." <laughs> <laughs> it was a heady, it was a heady time. I mean, the crowd just went wild with that. Okay, mm 